Welcome to Bite Size Brain Science. Hi, my name is Dr. Ben Webb. In this masterclass, we are going to learn about the structure and function of the brain. Let's start by introducing the general layout of the human brain. This layout is present from birth and is consistent in all animals from very primitive species all the way up to humans. What we see here is an adult human brain. At the bottom here, we have the spinal cord, which is bringing information into the brain and sending it back to the body. One thing to remember is that the closer we are to the spinal cord, the more basic functions are. Then we have the hindbrain and the midbrain, and finally you have the forebrain. Look how large that forebrain is in humans. This is where all of the thinking, emotions and memories are happening. So you can see as you move from bottom to the top of the brain, you change from basic functions that are trying to keep us alive to much more complex functions. So let's go to the actual structure and function. We're going to cover the major parts of the brain. You should always be thinking, what's the name of each part of the brain? Where is it? What's its function? What does it do? If you start with the basic brain plan, four structures jump right out at you. You can see the brain stem, then you have the cerebellum at the back of the brain. We then have a structure called the thalamus and the hypothalamus below it. And finally, we have the cerebrum in the upper part of the brain. So let's start with the brainstem. The brainstem is divided into three individual structures. If you start at the bottom, you have the medulla oblongata, then you have the pons, and at the top of the brainstem, you have the midbrain. These three structures make up what we call the brainstem. That's a structure, so what's its function? It does two things. First, it controls all of our basic needs, like keeping the heart beating, keeping circulation going, and digestion working. So you can see any damage to the, to the brainstem is going to be catastrophic. The second thing it does is it, se it sends signals to the rest of the body and receives them back. It has sensory information coming in from different parts of the body, and it issues commands to make the body move. It filters and routes this information to make sure it gets to the right places. Behind the brainstem, at the back of the brain, we have the cerebellum, the little brain. Its function is motor control. When you play sports, it is the cerebellum that gives you coordination and balance. It also gives you motor memory. So when you ride a bike and you remember to pedal and don't lose your balance, it's thanks to your cerebellum. Further up and above the brainstem, right there in the middle of your brain is a thalamus. Imagine a busy train station like Grand Central Station or London Waterloo, where trains are constantly arriving and departing. Like a busy station, the thalamus is constantly receiving messages from all over the brain. It has to sort them and make sure they are relayed to the correct destination in the brain. Right here below the thalamus is the hypothalamus, which sits above the roof of your mouth near the pituitary gland. What does this do? Well, it maintains homeostasis. Via the pituitary gland, it releases hormones around the body and controls your body temperature, thirst, and sleep. If we move further up, we reach the cerebrum, which is responsible for the integration of complex sensory and neural functions. It contains billions of neurons and is responsible for form performing higher functions like interpreting touch, interpreting vision, interpreting your hearing, as well as speech, emotions, thinking, control of movement, and even consciousness. Everything I've shown you is from the side of the brain. But if you flip the brain 90 degrees and look at the brain from the front, you can see that the brain actually consists of two halves, and these are called the cerebral hemispheres. There is a right and a left hemisphere. They're connected by this mass of nerves called the corpus callosum. There is a tendency in the brain for lateralization we put some things on the left side of our brain, like mathematical reasoning and language, and other functions we put on the right side of our brain, like face recognition. Now, if we look right below the corpus callosum, we find this area called the basal ganglia. This collection of nuclei inside here are called the basal ganglia. What are nuclei? Well, they are collections of cells with the same functions. The main function of the basal ganglia is to coordinate all of our movements. And if, and if this area stops working, people will unfortunately end up with Parkinson's disease. Now we have arrived at the cerebral cortex. That makes up about 80% of the brain. 
and it's divided into different lobes. So if we start at the front of the brain at what is called the frontal lobe, what's its function? Well, it essentially it is the boss, the control center of the brain. It has executive control. By interacting with the rest of the brain, it controls a lot of our movements and emotions, and it's where our personality lives. People who have damage up there have huge changes to their personality and emotional swings. If we move back to the parietal lobe, what does that do? It's mainly involved in sensation and how we interact with the world around us. Inside this area we have the somatosensory cortex. When you map this area along the cere cerebral cortex, you can see it devotes huge amounts of the brain surface area to parts of the body like your fingers, your tongue, your lips. In other words, we have more neurons and a lot more sensory information coming in from more sensitive parts of our body. If you have damaged this part of the brain, you might end up ignoring part of your body or even one side of the world around you. Then we can move to the back here to the occipital lobe. It's the only lobe with a single unitary function, vision. It produces all of your visual perception of the world around you. The fact that so much cortex is devoted to vision shows what an important function it is for us and our survival. Damage to this part of the brain would effectively make you blind to everything on one side of the world. Then we move to the temporal lobe. This lobe is important in language, in hearing, recognizing faces and emotions, and also very important in memory. Damage to this part of the brain can cause complete amnesia, where you are unable to form any new memories. So you can see that each lobe is associated with different functions. That's the brain. Here is everything you've learned about its structure and function for you to review. See you in the next mini masterclass.